Okay, so now we're going to talk about X-ray imaging. Now, whenever you look at the X-ray image, okay, you will see um, certain parameters that we need to talk about. One is called sharpness. Another one will be contrast. So what is sharpness and what is contrast? So when we talk about sharpness, uh, what's the definition of sharpness? The definition of sharpness is the ease with which the edges of the structures can be determined. Now, what does it mean now? Uh? Can you see this is the bone? You can see the boundary very clearly. So this is called sharp. Can you see all these boundaries clearly? This is called sharp. When it's fuzzier, then you say it's not sharp. Example, when you're taking a photo with your camera phone, your hand keeps shaking, then everything is so fuzzy, uh, that is not sharp. So if you can see the boundaries clearly, that's called sharp. Like this is not so sharp compared to here, right? Uh, this is called sharpness. And what is contrast? Contrast is the difference in degree of blackening of the different regions. Example, you will see uh, that all this is black because that is just pure flesh. Alright, and can you see it's white? So that's bone. So you can see a contrast, for example, here. This is a bit whiter, so that is actually muscle. This one is just pure, mainly flesh. And this is bone. So you can see a clear difference in the, the brightness, or rather the blackening. So then it's called contrast. Alright? So let's first talk about the factors that affect sharpness. So sharpness uh, is um, determined by three, um, three things. Uh. Number one will be the size of the anode. All right, which is what we are talking about here. So what is the anode? Now remember, the electrons will hit the anode. If the anode is small, the beam of X-ray that comes out is also narrow. And so let's say it passes through this object and forms a shadow on the screen, then your image will have a small partial shadow, which means it is sharp. Now you need to understand how X-rays behave. When X-ray passes through your body, if it passes through fat, most of it can pass through. Very little is absorbed, so it produces a very dark, uh, image on the film but if it is bone very little pass through or nothing passes through so it remains white because when the extra hits the film it becomes darker one. so if not no extra hits it becomes white it stays white okay so you this shadow here shows that it's quite sharp but if your anode is big then your beam that comes out is white and when it hits the same object it forms a very big partial shadow which means that it's not very sharp so the idea is the smaller the anode the sharper it is huh? So then the question is, why don't we make the anode as small as possible, as tiny, like a pin? <laughs> but the problem is, if it's too small, then very few electrons will be able to hit it. So what will happen? Very few photons will come out. So intensity is low. So if intensity is low, very few photons will hit the film, so it take very long to darken. So the patient has to stand for very long. So sometimes, we cannot make the anode too small. But if the beam is still too wide, such that it's not sharp enough, we can use an aperture. So what is an aperture? It's basically uh, just a small hole uh, that you make a slit uh, out of this uh, metal plate such that the X-ray can pass through. So let's say uh, you find that the beam is too wide. So because you need a big intensity, so you need the wider anode. You can put an aperture in front here. So when the light, or no, when the X-ray comes out, it can become a narrow beam. So this is the gap that you put here. Uh. Okay, so you make a small aperture, then you get sharper. And the third and final um, uh, factor that affects sharpness. So the third one is the scattering. So what is scattering? Uh, you see, uh, when the X-ray passes through your body, it will pass through the atoms. Uh. So when the size uh, of the uh, atoms uh, is actually much smaller than the wavelength, uh, what will happen is uh, scattering can occur. So, uh, okay? And when it scatters, right? If you don't have anything to block the scattered X-rays, it won't be sharp anymore. You know why? Because the X-ray that passes through your body, if it passes through the flesh, it should go straight and darken the area behind it. But if it goes through your flesh and scatters and darkens the area behind the bone, then you will get a fuzzy boundary. Right? So in order to prevent, or you cannot prevent this, but you can reduce the amount of scattered X-rays hitting the film, we use lead grids. So lead grids are those, um, these grids like this made, made of lead, which is between 2 to 10 in 1 mm. So you can imagine how, how small is 1 mm, you can fit 2 to 10 of them. So that's why each of them are very, very thin ones. So you won't be able to see uh, like zebra lines on the image because they're very thin. Okay, but what we will do, it will block off the scattered extracts because those that are moving at a scattered uh, or angle will be blocked off. But those are passing straight through will pass through. Lah. But the problem is you cannot use too many because if you have too many, 
No doubt, you get sharper because you block off more scattered extracts. But you notice it also blocks off those that are moving straight. So it means that it takes a longer time to darken. So a patient will have to stand longer and be exposed to more extracts, which is why we cannot overdo this. Lah. Right? So that is contrast. Uh, no, that is sharpness. Now, what about contrast? Ah? So contrast, um, the definition is different. So contrast is defined as the difference in the degree of blackening between the different regions. So what are the factors that affect contrast? There are actually three, right, as well. So there is um, exposure time, um, penetration, and scattering. There it is. Scattering. Now, why does exposure time affect your contrast? Now remember the area behind your bone will always remain white. But the area behind the flesh will keep getting darker. So the longer you wait, the area behind the flesh gets darker and darker, so you get better contrast. Penetration. Now the penetration you're talking about is not to say must be very high or very low, must be just nice. High enough to pass through fat and muscle, but not high enough to pass through bone, then you get good contrast. Because if it's too energetic, everything passed through, everything will be black. Not energetic enough, everything will be white. So you just have to have a right amount. Now, scattering also affects your contrast because if it passes through the flesh, flesh or muscle, but instead of passing straight through, it went and scattered to the area behind the bone, then it caused the bone to be darker. But it caused the area behind the flesh to be lighter, so you'll reduce your contrast. So that means your light grids also help to increase your contrast. But if all these three are also not enough, there are two more factors you can use. One is contrast medium, one is fluorescent plates. So what is contrast medium? For example, you want to scan uh, your arteries. So say somebody has a block in the artery somewhere, but the, the walls of the arteries are so thin that if you go under normal x-ray, you cannot see the walls of the artery. Or for example, you want to scan your um, digestive tract. All right. So you, support, you, you uh, suspect there's a blockage there. But the problem is, the walls of the intestines are too thin. You cannot see it as well. So that is when you need to inject or swallow a contrast medium. So what will happen is, for example, if you want to scan your artery, you can actually inject iodine into your bloodstream. So this iodine will absorb x-rays when it passes through your body. So you'll form a white trace on the image. So you'll see your arteries. So if they suddenly your white trace stops, that means you know there's a blockage. Or in the case of your, your, your intestines, right, you can actually swallow a barrier meal. So this barrier meal, as it passes through your digestive tract, you'll take a series of x-rays, then you, you will see a white trace. Because it absorbs your x-rays. Alright, it forms a white trace. So there, you can see what's wrong. Lah. But this contrast medium must be careful. You must fulfill some criteria. Lah. So it must be non-toxic and safe. It must have sufficient contrast, produce sufficient contrast, and it must have correct viscosity, miscibility, and excretion rate. Viscosity means it must be not too thick, not too thin, because you don't want it to flow too fast or too, too slowly. Yeah? It must be just nice. Miscibility must be able to mix with other chemicals. For example, if they want you to swallow barrier meal, you probably can't swallow unless they mix something else to make it more pleasant. Yeah? And excretion rate, so remember, it must come out of your body. So it cannot be absorbed. It must come out. So this is called um, your contrast medium. There's another thing you can use, this is called fluorescent plates. So what are fluorescent plates? You know fluorescent material, it glows when it's exposed to like x-ray or ultraviolet. I'm sure you have noticed that if you go to like a very dark science center or you go to clubbing where they use ultraviolet light, you'll notice the white part of your clothing will glow because it contains fluorescent material. So this fluorescent material, when it's exposed to ultraviolet or x-ray, right, it will absorb the energy from the photon, and the electrons jump to a higher energy level and falls back down, it can produce light, so it glows. Okay, that's how it glows. So why we, what we will do is, we will take the, let's say the x-ray plate, that is supposed to get the image, you sandwich it between two fluorescent plates, on top and also at the bottom. Alright, at the bottom also you put one one. Now, why you want to put fluorescent plates? Because fluorescent plates will glow. And when they glow, when it's exposed to x-rays, it will actually help to darken the film faster. Because the film is actually more sensitive to light compared to x-ray. That means you expose it to light, it darkens faster. You expose it to x-ray, it darkens slower. So therefore, we want to expose it to light. So when the x-ray passes through the first, the top fluorescent plate, it will glow. So you have to darken the film. Then it passes through the X-ray film and also darkens it, then it goes to the back and then the back fluorescent plate also glows so it darkens from the bottom. 
So therefore, you darken it from the front, from the back, and also from the middle. So it darkens faster. So these are the factors that affect contrast.